Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to do a 2022 review for the uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max. So this is a 2019 phone. You know, obviously a lot of phones, uh, things come since. Yeah, I think you have like the Mini now, you have the... I, think there's, I don't think there's an SE anymore. I think everything's pretty much this style of uh, all-screen OLED. Obviously the lower-end ones aren't the OLED, but... Uh, Kind of like the new normal now for Apple is this style, which is what you get. Now, this was a phone I bought uh, secondhand. I don't think I've ever bought an iPhone brand new. To me, it just I buy them at least a year, if not two, behind and uh, get them in good condition, keep them in good condition. Then I can usually sell them for pretty close, maybe even like half of what I paid for it. And, and yeah, I get the new one, newer one. So, first, I'm just going to start with how it's uh, conditioned. So, this was the uh, not sure if it was called forest green or midnight green or whatever it was, but it's held up well. Uh, this is a glass back, but it's like this nice matte glass. And this is the first glass iPhone I've owned that I didn't break the back, uh, which I only owned one other. It was the uh, 8 Plus. It was that clear, um, shiny, like looks like the front type of glass that pretty much all phones used to be like that were glass. And I had it in just that leather Apple case and just dropping it on carpet a few times. It had no cracks when I got it and it just ended up with a bunch of them. So this one I put a heavier, I'll talk about in my case, is a UAG rubber one because I didn't want to have that happen again. But at the time they were also touting that this was a more durable glass. And I'm going to go ahead and just say it was. And then I think the camera lenses have sapphire on them. And now the front... The last owner actually installed. I'm not sure if they had it professionally installed because it's like excellent. Uh, I don't even know if I can do them this good. There's no bubbles, no uh, dust, anything. And this is actually a nice one. The only, like a lot of them for the iPhone, they have that cut, that notch for some reason cut out. But if you have a nice cleanly installed piece of glass over it, I don't think it inhibits it any. It's the only cutout you have is just for the uh, speaker. And there are some nicks in the glass, which you might be able to see. Obviously, the phones get beat up, so it is worth putting that on. And the polished edges have still held up nicely. And unfortunately, uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, I actually make my videos with this phone. So I'm using my iPad Pro, which is a decent camera, but not on par with this, I don't think. At least through the viewfinder, it looks a little bit more noisy. Probably not as well equipped to handle a lower light. And uh, it's hard to, I uh, can't use a tripod with an iPad because as far as I know, I don't have a giant mount that could support that. Or So I'm just kind of having it propped up. So hopefully at least it gets the uh, message across. Trying my best. So I like the feel of this. Just have that one screen protector. Didn't have to put glass on the back. Thought I might need to, but it's been holding up. But just to finish up on that, so... These are the UAG cases. I have two of the same. I got them cheap. Now, one thing, and I'll link the video. I did a mod because this was the type of case I needed to where you could kind of was recessed. You could put this kickstand in, and they both work the same. They're both the same ESR kickstand, and it works really nicely. And again, I made a separate video on that. I'm really not going to focus on that here. Uh, one's a leather back. One's this carbon fiber. And they kind of give it that squared off edge like the 12 and 13 iPhones do. So it's pretty good. That's what I've been using uh, with that phone. This is the most expensive. I paid fairly close to retail, but not, not a few hundred off. But uh, so definitely wanted to make sure I put a better case than just that thin Apple leather one on. So I'll go ahead and start with just a boot test don't like how you have to hold the power button. I thought back in the day you kind of just held them for a second, but it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you're really not restarting them that often anyway. And I'll touch on a few different things like battery life, what I use it for, how it's held up, and then pricing. I mean, there's a good bit of options now, so... So there we go, and now it wasn't crazy fast, but it, you know, it, it's okay. Uh, again, the ang angle won't be the greatest just because I'm using that magic keyboard and on a propped up iPad, so. Um, these are the widgets I'm using. 
I think now, like, so basically I think I, iOS is where Android was like over 10 years ago. Pretty sure you can actually put these widgets in your home screen, but I'm just, this is just what, you know, if I'm using something iOS, I'm used to it like this. So I just keep them off to the side. And uh, the ones I'm using, this is just Apple. And then this is W, I think it's WDGTS. It's an older um, widget kind of before like the newer style that they use. And then this is usage, this is a newer one. This one's pretty good. I'm using like the older style. It's kind of hard to see through the viewfinder, but uh, cause you can kind of see the new style go up top. And then these ones, this usage, you can get that widget and you use it up here. But I like this older um, format of it cause it shows more information in one little block. I'm not sure why um, so much RAM's already being used. Now the uh, 11 only has four gigs, and I believe the uh, 12 and 13 both use six. iPad's always been pretty uh, slim on memory usage, but I don't know if just, you know, as apps progress and you get more features and everything that, uh, I don't know, I'd definitely go for that six, but the four is better than uh, anything before, so gets the job done. Now, I think that the uh, cameras on it are excellent best cameras in a phone, better than any point and shoot I've ever had. And again, I'm kind of trying to do this through the viewfinder and it looks way more noisy on the iPad, at least through this viewfinder on the, actually looking through the iPhone screen, that's nice and sharp. And then you get your wide angle. So you got three cameras, the uh, 12 and 13 Pro Max have uh, that fourth, but it's just a LiDAR depth sensor. Uh, if you're using AR, if you're using a lot of the portrait, you know, things like that might be worth it. But to me, I can, I, no complaints, I don't need it. Not, not a problem having it, but uh, I'm not missing out on anything. Now, this is a really cheap way of doing it, but uh, I did want to show that I'm on uh, iOS 14. I block the OTA updates, it's just what I do. Uh, I'll try not to go into too much of a spiel, but I've had the uh, second gen iPod touch that was way back in the day. But then I haven't had a recent Apple thing since uh, 2015 when I started getting the iPhones and iPads all the time. And since then, I've always had at least one or both of them. And for me, iOS one year would be really good. Then the update would either slow it down or just it had features that didn't seem to work well on the older hardware. So what I do when I get an iOS, instead of updating to a new one and then it being buggy and being miserable the whole year until they go to the next one, when I get one I like, I just block the update. And that's one thing I'm pretty sure if you update this, I don't think that those uh, beta profile OS um, updates or profiles will block updates anymore. I think they made it to where that doesn't work anymore. It w I'm sure jailbreaking would work, but the... Uh, uh, beta profiles were a nice, safe, and easy way to do it. So I just wanted to mention that I am using an older version, but uh, everything still works well. Everything's still supported. At some point, I might have to upgrade, or obviously, if I get a new iPhone, it's already going to have a newer update, and at that point, then you just have to use the newer one. But that's what I do. It's just me. And then the next thing I'll talk about would be um, battery health. So I'm at 86% here. And it's a little bit lower than the, I had the 6S Plus. I think that one had the update where they showed battery health. And I know the uh, 8 Plus did. That one, I think when I got rid of it, I don't even know if I was down to 86. This one I got, it was like 99, 98, something like that. It actually went down to like 92 in increments pretty quickly. And then it sat at, I don't know, 89 or 88 for probably several months, maybe even six months. And it's been on 86% health for probably at least three or four months. So it's that's just how the battery health is always kind of sits for a while, a couple months, and then it'll go down a few percentage. Sometimes it'll go down even more, like three or four, which uh, that, you, know, you get that panic attack for a few seconds until you realize you'll be okay. And I'm not sure how well, because I actually don't use my iPhone that much to where I drain it. But I did yesterday, so you can see this isn't normally indicative of my activity. Since I knew I was going to do this video, I was kind of going through seeing if the game, how gaming worked. And all of my uh, games needed updated. 
So they had to sit in the app with the screen on. And so this really isn't how I use it every day. But you can see I got seven hours of screen on time, which is pretty good. But again, I was really just sitting there, just uh, downloading, you know, Wi-Fi antenna, not really trying to do any heavy work with it. I honestly don't use my iPhone. I mean, I'm always have it with me, but I use my iPad more. Any type of web browsing, I'd use my iPad for if I want to watch YouTube. I'm using my iPad or video editing. Most, almost all of it. I, if I can do it on my iPad, I will. So for me, I mean, I use Instagram or. Uh, if you scroll through the YouTube feed on your iPhone, you get the community posts and everything. So I'm not doing that much. I do more on my iPad, so that takes the brunt. Now, if I'm out and about, I usually don't have time to use my phone, but if I do, I might get a little more use out of it if I don't have my iPad with me. So to me, it's more of a secondary device, honestly, than a main driver. But I know that's different for most people. A lot of people, pretty much everyone I know, they watch all their YouTube videos on, um, other iPhones, so they're draining their battery much quicker. I'd say that seven hours that was that screen on time is probably about right. Now, if you were just listening to music with the screen off, you'd get, you know, well, that wouldn't be screen on, but you'd get more battery life. But I'd say seven, eight hours screen on. If you're playing a game like COD Mobile or something, it probably wouldn't be that high. But I'd actually, I know it wouldn't be near that. But either way, I mean, I get, I'm usually down to 60% at the end of the day. A lot of it now, like if I'm in the shower or something, I'll actually use my AirPods and uh, have like a YouTube video or a podcast screen on playing. So that's always like an hour or so there that I uh, usually have screen on. And then other apps, if I do, I, I do my banking and everything, usually through just the app on here because it's more convenient than the browsers. Pop up another app here. Just open a few. And I usually have, I usually keep the weather open all the time and then manage my email so I can see what's coming in through the Gmail app. And then I have just the regular Apple app, but I prefer the Gmail app. You won't get as good of an angle here, but just opening up a few. So really it's just used almost more traditionally just for email, a little bit of social media. But honestly, at this point, I really don't even open Instagram that often. Just kind of tired of it. And then I will touch a little bit on gaming. And everything on this phone being OLED, it does look better than the iPad or most other. I think Samsung's a little more saturated, so those are OLED. And I haven't paid attention because I get a phone now and it just works, so I don't worry about it too much. But you do get a pretty good screen being OLED. Now, for me, mobile games, I pretty much just prefer Swipe. Like, some of these are, like, really old from my iPod days. But uh, I would rather play, like, a Swipe game, something that actually feels more mobile than a watered-down console game. Uh, the exception would be COD Mobile. It's pretty uh, on par. Not near the same, but, I mean, it's a very similar experience. You have those same full-size maps and everything. Obviously not at the same fidelity. But you kind of get that. You don't really feel like you're lacking too much. And then Madden and NBA, those aren't that good. But again, just for, I'm not going to sit down and play this all day. So if you were in a waiting room or something like that, or if you're in school and on the bus, it'd be, you know, you can definitely play pretty much any game you want still on this 11 Pro Max. I guess I might do somewhat of a gaming test here. I tested a little bit more. When I play a game, if again, if it's not swipe, I like to use the um, uh, wireless controller. I have the Steel Series Nimbus Plus. And actually, while I'm here, I'll, again, this is what uh, the kickstand it, I came up with, the ESR. It's pretty cheap, and it's really well made. It's been holding up for over a year now. You can see I have a bit of an update, but go ahead and try and do it like this. Now, unfortunately, you can't show the home screen in landscape on these newer, um, you know, the uh, plus models used to be able to do that, but now I kind of have to keep it uh, in the portrait. Now, as far as I can tell, it runs COD Mobile pretty good. I don't run it uh, full, so I'm running graphics at high, but then I do have the frame rate at very high. I have all the different uh, effects I think that you can turn on on. 
I could probably run it in uh, very high, but I just it eats to the battery pretty quickly. So I like to keep it there. It performs pretty much the same as my iPad Pro does. So I'll just go ahead and see how quickly I can get into a match here. Again, normally I would use that uh, Steel Series controller, but just to show that it runs smoothly, and uh, if it can run this game, then obviously it's going to be able to run most scaled down mobile games. And I'm not that big of a mobile gamer. Again, uh, I have uh, consoles, so I'm just going to play like that if I want. But you can see that's a very aesthetically pleasing. And it runs smoothly. Not really going to be able to play. You're just showing off that. Uh, and you can tell it's why you need a controller because everyone else is pretty much playing like this. So you can really dominate <laughs> if you... Uh, have a controller because it's pretty hard to play like this. I'm going to really leave it at that. Again, you don't have that uh, nice landscape option like you did with the old iPhones that were the Plus models. And you can actually use that stand like this if you put it in the right spot. Um, but it's kind of out of the viewfinder now. But I mean, this really gets the job done for me. Again, that's my gaming, but the battery life's still pretty good. And uh, it does work for social media. We can't. That's my one of my main things. But the, the camera's great, so that still gets the job done for me. And I really don't see any need to upgrade just yet. Battery still holds strong in the physical condition of the device, especially in this case, no cracks to the glass. And I will say, that, uh, I charge this with a wireless charger. It's just a random cheap one. I think it's seven point five watts. And what I do, I charge it overnight, so I just put it on there. So it gets a nice slow charge. I don't know if that um, sustains battery life. You can look, sometimes people, they have excellent, and then other times they say it goes down a whole bunch. So I really don't know. That's just what I do. Uh, since I've had wireless uh, charging iPhones, I use the wireless charger. Now you can fast charge it, and I have the 20 watt uh, Apple C to uh, Lightning. And then I have uh, a, a higher wattage one but so you could get that big charge if you needed one quick but that's really what i do with the charging but that battery life's still pretty good no the only thing i'm missing because this is pretty powerful and i believe even the 13 uh, pro max still is an eight core it might be running at a higher frequency but it's still eight core and there's no m1 yet the m1 is definitely overkill but i really i mean they might as well since apple's really touting it they might as well just put it in their iPhone too. So I haven't been paying attention to the rumors. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, will they put an M1 in it or not? Again, it's very capable the way it is, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. But the only thing I think this phone's really missing is it would be nice to have some type of a multitasking because as it stands, you can pretty much only go, there's that nice image again, but you can pretty much only go in and out. You can't like, do split screen or anything, but it is a pretty small screen and I, I, iPhones have never been able to do that. But it would be nice if they could, as much power as they pack, if they could implement that. And I think I'm gonna close it on, uh, to bring this train wreck home, uh, the pricing and such. I actually just looked at the Apple's trade in. So if you traded this phone in, and this would qualify because it's in good condition, the max you can get is 450. So that's pretty good considering I think it was like five or 550 when the 12 Pro Max was the new phone. So now we're two years in with the 13, so this is two years behind and they're still giving you 450 for an excellent condition one. So I think that's a good deal. Now at that point, you're obviously buying a brand new, you know, higher priced iPhone, but a lot of times you can get that like on eBay, it probably would go for more. Not sure on that, but usually it seems like eBay the market's a little bit higher than what Apple are for you. But iPhones are kind of in a league of their own. They hold their value much better because people know what they want. People want that iPhone. Your iPad's a little harder of a sell because people, you know, only the people that really want an iPad are going to pay that premium for an iPad. So if you could get your hands on an 11 Pro Max, I mean, you still got that triple camera. You still got the big OLED. My OLED doesn't have any burn in, but again, I'm not using it like crazy amount. Uh, it gets the job done for basic tasks, banking, email, uh, social media. You can game on it. Not a big uh, mobile gamer, but it, you have that option. So it really can do it all. Cameras are still great. 
runs fine. It gets a good good enough battery life for me and has enough built in that I'm not feeling like I'm missing anything compared to Android or any of that. Now the 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max are slightly um, larger screen. I think it's like 0.2 of an inch, but uh, not, not that big. But And then the 13 Pro Max has a bigger battery as well. Obviously there's always a spec bump, but I don't think you're missing too much. I mean, Face ID works. I don't think it's any faster on the newer ones. It definitely works on here. And none of the new ones offer a Touch ID. So assuming that's just gonna be a thing of the past. So you really can't go wrong with the, tw the 11, the 12 or the 13. And then you have the mini and just the, the non-pro and all those other ones. But I'm kind of focusing if you have a Pro Max, you're probably gonna to wanna to keep a Pro Max. So 12 has that nice um, squared off edges and everything. So there's some preference there, but I really think it just comes down to price. So if this is what you can get your hands on, or if you get a newer one, as long as the, it's in good shape and it's not all cracked up and it was taken care of, I, I think you're getting a good, good phone. So I haven't really priced everything too much because uh, again, I have this phone and I'm sticking with it. But as long as you're not being like ridiculous and paying more for this than you could get a used 12 or 13 Pro Max for, Definitely nothing wrong with getting this phone. And then Apple does a great job supporting their previous phones. Never had a problem since the iPhone 5 that uh, they've always been supported years afterward. So uh, no problems there. And I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you're looking at the 11 or you wanna go 12 or 13, or if you have a, still have a Pro Max 11, is that holding up and anything else on that? It's definitely still a solid phone and I'm happy with it. So uh, thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.